welcome back to my channel. I'm Puck. Today we are doing a very exciting video, uh, which is a author guide for Juliet Morillier, who you will know if you watch any of my videos. She's one of my all-time favorite authors, and I talk about her books quite a lot on my channel as I keep rereading them and reviewing them and just talking about them all the time. Uh, so every once in a while I get questions from people about uh, where to start with her books, how to get into her books, uh, or if you have to read it, them in a certain order, like certain series before others, because uh, she does have quite a few books she's been writing for a while. Uh, and so I thought I would make a video to kind of summarize my thoughts, answer some of those questions as to where to start with Juliet Morillier from, you know, my opinion on where you can start. Because I think there are a couple of different places that you could potentially start with her books. Um, for this, I am going to uh, very, like, quickly go through each of her series or standalones to give, like, a real quick summary of them, uh, just so that I have a sense of, like, the whole, the full breadth of her, uh, of her books, and just focusing on, like, novels and novellas, not on short story collections or individual short stories. Um, at this point, as of May 2023, I've read everything that she has written that is, like, a full book. I also have read her um, two short story collections, but I haven't necessarily read like every single short story that she's ever written that's been in like a, you know, literary magazine or something like that. But as far as her books go, I have read everything that she's written and so I want to give kind of an overview of all of her different series and standalones. Uh, most of these, I don't think all of them, but most of them I have done series reviews for. Uh, so anything that I have a standalone review for I will link in the description. So if you want more detail about it you can go there because this is going to be pretty high level uh, just because there's a lot of books and this video is going to be really long because I'm going through so many different things. Um, but just to kind of talk a little bit about her books in general, Juliet Morillier primarily writes adult historical fantasy. Uh, she does also do a couple of YA books, she also has some purely fantasy books, but most of them fall into adult historical fantasy. Um, a lot of her books have folklore, or pretty much all of her books, have folklore woven into them in different ways. Uh, they are very magical and atmospheric, uh, and they have a kind of coziness to them. I wouldn't categorize them as what is now considered like cozy fantasy as a subject, genre, but there is this kind of wholesomeness that her books tend to have. Um, while her characters are going through very dark things, there is this like wholesomeness and belief in people uh, that her books often have and this kind of warm perspective on life and people, I think, that a lot of her books carry. Um, her writing is very beautiful and lyrical and descriptive without being overwritten. It's very atmospheric uh, and often has a lot of nature themes in it as well, uh, which are all things that I love about her writing. And one of the things I also love about her books and part of why I keep coming back to them is because I love her characters so much. She writes very strong female characters who are not strong necessarily in the way of being warriors. I think she only has one series in which she has like a warrior woman kind of character, but they are strong female characters because of their internal strength of character, because of their love and dedication to their family, because of their determination and their cleverness and their resourcefulness, uh, because of their faith in people and all of these internal characteristics that make them very strong and resilient characters. Um, so there are a lot of things, there are a lot, there's a lot to love about her books. As I'm going, I'm actually not gonna hold up the books themselves because then I would have to take out pretty much this entire shelf of my books because uh, there are a lot of them. So this whole, this is my Juliet Morelia shelf. Uh, so I'll put pictures up on the screen for the books. Uh, but we'll kick off starting with the Seven Water series. It is her first series and her most well-known series. Uh, so the Seven Water series originally started as a trilogy which con which consisted of 
Daughter of the Forest, Son of the Shadows, and Child of the Prophecy. And then I think seven or eight years later, she came back and wrote another trilogy continuing that series. So it becomes a six book series, but it was kind of written as two trilogies. Uh, and so the rest of the series includes uh, Heir to Seven Waters, Seer of Seven Waters, and Flame of Seven Waters. This is a generational companion series, so each book is following a different character through the generations of the Family of Seven Waters, and each book is its own contained story, although they do have a thread uh, that connects all of them. There's an overarching plot that connects them all. The first book is Daughter of the Forest and is the only one in the series that is a retelling, but it is a fairy tale retelling of the, uh, the Six Swans. So in it we are following a young girl named Sorka who is the youngest daughter of the Lord of Seven Waters. She has six older brothers. When her father remarries, he marries a sorceress who curses Sorka's older brothers and turns them into swans and Sorka has to go through various trials in order to save them and attempt to turn them back into humans. For this first book I do always want to put a content warning on it because it does have a fairly graphic on page uh, rape scene which can be very shocking if you are not anticipating it so I just wanted to put a content warning for that. Um, other books from her do also deal with violence against women but this is I think the most graphic depiction of it but overall I think that she handles these situations very well in her various books. Uh, so Daughter of the Forest is the first book in the Seven Water series and then each book follows another woman through the generations of the family of Seven Waters. The next series I'm going to mention is the Blackthorn and Grimm trilogy uh, because this one it takes place in the same world of Seven Waters but it is not connected to the Seven Waters series really. The Blackthorn and Grimm trilogy includes Dreamer's Pool, Tower of Thorns, and Den of Wolves. In this we are following Blackthorn who is a healer who has had a traumatic past and was seeking revenge and is now imprisoned. Uh, she is about to be killed uh, in prison when a mysterious fey man appears to her and offers her a deal that if she follows his rules to live in a specific place to offer help to anybody who asks her for seven years um, and to not seek revenge for seven years then she will be free after that but if she breaks those rules she will be right back where she started in prison. She takes the deal because she doesn't really have any other options and he releases her from prison and in the process another prisoner escapes as well who is this man named Grimm who becomes her companion uh, and the two of them move to a like a small house in the woods uh, where Blackthorn sets up shop uh, and they become ingrained in the community around them and learn about uh, the the history of the community and the folklore and they get brought drawn into a mystery. So this series does, the whole trilogy follows Blackthorn and Grimm as characters, but each book again kind of is its own story as each book is solving its own mystery, usually mysteries based on local folklore. Then the next series uh, is the Warrior Bards trilogy, uh, and this one includes The Harp of Kings, A Dance with Fate, and A Song of Flight. It is following a few young warriors, two of whom are children of some of the characters from the Blackthorn and Grimm trilogy. So these are the two series that are like most connected. Uh, so we're following three young warriors who are on Swan Island, which is this island that trains elite warriors. Um, and as part of their training, they, they get assigned to a mission trying to hunt down a very significant magical harp um, and in the process find out that there may be connections to the fey world uh, and there are some mysterious beings, crow-like beings that have been showing up and that is a thread throughout the series and this is the like one series where the main character is actually like a warrior woman 
character. Most of her protagonists are more often either just regular people or they are like wise women and healers. Now we'll go to the Breedy Chronicles. I'm not really doing these in any particular order other than those first three just because they are all kind of in the same world. Uh, but the Breedy Chronicles are another historical fantasy series that consists of the Dark Mirror, the Blade of Fortru, uh, and Well of Shades. They're following Breedy, who is a Pictish king, and in the first book we're following him from a very young age, from about six years old. He's being raised in seclusion by a druid who believes that Breedy is destined to be this like special destined king. It has a very like Arthurian vibe to it and so he's re raising Breedy in seclusion uh, to prepare him as best he can for this role. Breedy uh, as a child finds a baby on his doorstep which is this little girl. Everyone wants to leave her outside uh, because they think that she is one of the fair folk but Breedy feels that he is destined to know her and needs to keep her close and so he brings her in the name her Twala and they grow up together and so we're following them as they grow up and find their places in the world. Breedy trying to find his place as this sort of destined king uh, and Twala trying to find her place as this kind of outsider who never really quite fits in or is accepted but they have an extremely strong bond. I guess sticking with her adult historical fiction we'll just group these all together. Uh, she also has the Light Island saga which is a duology, another historical fantasy. Uh, this one actually is more Norse inspired. The first book is Wolfskin and the second book is Fox Mask. We're following a few characters but our main character is Ivand who is a Viking dedicated to Thor um, but from we start with following him from a pretty young age uh, when he befriends Summerled who has who has like a darkness in him uh, and Ivand is like a golden retriever human uh, and so the two of them grow up and are very close friends. Eventually they go on a journey together to a new land and when they get there Ivand is really confronted with the dark side of his childhood friend uh, and he has to find out, figure out, uh, will he admit to himself that uh, his friend is a worse person than he thought and what does loyalty cost him? And then we also have a perspective of a local priestess from this place where they have journeyed to. Uh, and this actually has a bit of a retelling in it as well but I don't really want to spoil what it is because it comes in sort of at the end. Uh, but so that's the first book and then the second book is following the children of some of the characters from the first book. This is a very common theme in Juliet Marillier's books that she does a lot of like generational stories where she follows children of uh, characters in previous books. And then she has a standalone fairy tale retelling of Beauty and the Beast called Heart's Blood. In this we are following our main character Katrin. Her father has died and while she was grieving she had family who came and took over and have been very cruel to her. She's finally escaped and is trying to make her way in the world. She does have skills as a scribe and is very, she loves at, uh, being a scribe and so she's trying to find someplace where she can use those skills to make a new life for herself. She ends up finding her way to this uh, remote kingdom uh, in which people seem very scared and suspicious and she finds out that this place Whistling Tor is cursed uh, but that the Lord of Whistling Tor is actually looking for a scribe uh, because he wants to translate and transcribe some of the books in his library uh, and so people are very afraid of going up to his, I don't know if it's a castle or a manor, but the place where he lives at the top of Whistling Tor and Katrin makes her way up there to see if she can help. And this one involves ghosts, it involves a lot of books, it involves 
curses and magic. And I gotta say, as Beauty and the Beast retellings go, I think this is one of my favorite ones. I'm kind of picky about Beauty and the Beast retellings, uh, but that might just be me. So those are all of her adult books. She does also have a few YA series. So one of them is the Wildwood duology. The first book is Wildwood Dancing. The second one is Sybil Secret. I'm not sure if it's actually pronounced Sybil, but that's how I've been saying it in my head. Um, but the first book is a 12 Dancing Princesses retelling set in Transylvania. So when the uh, daughters of a merchant kind of slip out to go to this fairy party. The, there are some other fairies who show up or some other fae who are kind of vampire-esque. Uh, but so we were following the daughters of a merchant um, who have this relationship to the local fair folk and they go to visit them and dance uh, on the full moon. However, their father being a merchant has to travel and at one point when he does so, he leaves a male family member in charge who wreaks havoc for them. He's incredibly frustrating. It's incredibly frustrating. Um, but they are dealing with that while trying to hide the fact that they are um, slipping away to the fairy world. And this is another uh, series where the first book is following one of the sisters and then the second book is following a different sister so they're kind of companions and they don't have to be read together the kind the first one could kind of be a standalone and then the other ya series that she has is the shadowfell series uh which is following our main character naren it is set in this world um which has a rich history of you know, magic and the fair folk or the wee folk, what are they called in this series? I don't remember. But uh, a new king has taken power who is very afraid of magic and has outlawed it and is hunting anybody who uses magic, uh, unless they are specifically the people who have been conscripted to use magic for the king. Uh, and so Naren has a ability to speak to the fair folk and she does have magic of her own. And so she and her father are kind of on the run. She gets separated from her father at the beginning of the first book and she strikes out to on her own to find Shadowfell, which is a, a hidden place where it is rumored there is a rebel force amassing. Uh, and so she is trying to find her way there to find safety and also to see if she can help the rebels as she is learning more about her powers. And then the last book is Beautiful, which is more of a novella uh, that is actually only an audiobook on Audible. It's the only way to read it, which is very frustrating to me because I would like to have a physical copy so I could have it on my shelf with the rest of my books. But this one is fantasy. It is a retelling of East of the Sun, West of the Moon, but it is from the perspective of the troll princess uh, and kind of exploring what happens to her after the events of the fairy tale, after the prince has been saved, after her uh, wedding has been destroyed, what happens to the princess? So we are following our main character, Hulda, who is this troll princess. She has been kept in seclusion and in ignorance by her mother, who's extremely cruel and controlling. Uh, but when everything goes up in flames and her mother dies, Hulda is now the queen of the trolls and she knows nothing about her land or her people or herself really. Uh, and so she sets off to travel around to find out more about everything. Um, and so we're following her as she is learning more about herself and the world and her people and just how to be how to be who she wants to be and what type of queen she wants to be, what kind of place she wants to rule. I'm actually not totally sure what age range this one is intended for, but I think it's more YA than adult. All right, so those are all of the books. Uh, she does have many uh, short stories that are in anthologies or in literary magazines, uh, and then she also has uh, two short story collections, one called Prickle Moon and the other is Mother Thorn. But we're just talking about the full like novels or novellas for this. So now we can get into where to start with her books. Uh, so I think that there are probably a couple places you could start. 
my go-to recommendation is usually to start with Daughter of the Forest, start with the Seven Water series uh, for a few reasons. I think that uh, really, I think that the Seven Water series is like peak Marillier. Like that is the series that she is most well known for, most well loved for. That is where many people fall in love with her books. That's where I started, where I fell in love with her books. It is a personal favorite, but I am certainly not alone. It is really her most well loved series. Um, so if it sounds interesting to you, I think that that is really the best place to start. I love her writing in that series, her characters. They are just very intense <laughs> in some ways, but also very cozy in many ways. I will say that that series is her most romance heavy, probably, um, especially the like first trilogy of it, but the whole series is a little more romance heavy than most of her other books. Uh, so that may appeal to you, that may not. If for whatever reason the Seven Water series doesn't appeal to you, you don't really want to start there, uh, I think that you could start with the Blackthorn and Grimm trilogy. Uh, I think that also has a lot of the hallmarks of uh, Juliet Morellier's books, uh, her beautiful writing. It has a lot of you know, having a main character who is a healer and a wise woman, although I do love that Blackthorn is kind of grumpy about it. She's a very prickly character who kind of dislikes people but is also like, I hate all of you but I'm not gonna let you die. I just really enjoy that about her. Uh, so that series is much lighter on the romance. There is a romance in it but it is very uh, much more subtle and in the background. It is very slow burn. Um, really, Julia Marillier, a lot, most of her romances are very slow burn. She is excellent at slow burn romances, so that is also something I forgot to mention at the beginning, but that is also a characteristic of her books. Anyway, the Blackthorn and Grimm trilogy, I think you could start there if you wanted to, if you wanted something that was lighter on the romance, uh, and also something that feels a little bit lighter in tone, because Blackthorn and Grimm as characters are both dealing with trauma in their past. However, it is in their past, it is not on page, and so it is very much still affecting them and they are working through that, but the series as a whole just feels a little bit lighter because it is not like happening in this moment on page to these characters. Uh, so there's also that to consider. And while the Blackthorn and Grimm trilogy does take place in the same world as the Seven Water series, the two series are not connected. You don't need to read one before the other, so you could definitely start there. I Sometimes people ask if they can start with the Warrior Bards trilogy uh, with Harp of Kings. I would not recommend that. Um, I think like if you really wanted to, you could. I think that you could read that series and understand what's happening. It's not one of those series that's connected in a way that's like you would have no idea what's happening if you started there. I just don't think that it's like the best place to start, uh, partially because it is following the children of some of the characters from Blackthorn and Grimm trilogy, uh, and so for one thing, you might get some minor spoilers for kind of how things turn out in the Blackthorn and Grimm trilogy, so it depends on how sensitive to spoilers you are. But also because later on in the series we do encounter uh, some of their family members who are characters from the Blackthorn and Grimm trilogy, uh, and not a lot of time is spent on them, and it, I think it's kind of assuming that you know these characters and you already have the backstory and like the characterization in your mind, so you would understand what's happening in the book just fine, but I think that it would uh May, it would probably make a little more sense and be a little more meaningful if you have the context of these characters. Um, so I would not I would not recommend starting there, but you could if you really wanted to. <laughs> um, another place that I think you can start is with Wildwood Dancing. Uh, if you wanted something that is a little bit shorter and lighter, you get a lot of the 
fairy world atmosphere and whimsy of it which is very fun. I would say don't necessarily read the second book. I think that Wildwood Dancing is really best as a standalone. The two stories aren't really connected. Like the story of Wildwood Dancing is a complete story by itself. Uh, so I think it, it's really re best read as a standalone. Uh, so those are kind of my recommendations for where to start. First recommendation would be to start with the Seven Water series, but if you didn't want to do that, you could start with uh, Blackthorn and Grimm trilogy or with Wildwood Dancing. In terms of reading order for the series, like do you need to read one series before the other, the only series that that really matters with is potentially reading the Blackthorn and Grimm trilogy before the Warrior Bards. Everything else you don't really need to read anything before anything else. Um, I think that the Light Isles, the Light Isles saga and the Breedy Chronicles also technically take place in the same world, but are so like very, very slightly connected that it really doesn't matter uh, which one you read first, other than like when you read the Bre Breedy Chronicles, at one point they just mention like, oh yeah, this person's from the Light Isles. It, they, you don't really have to read one before the other. So I hope that I answered all of your questions. If you have more questions about like where to start or reading order for things, let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. I hope this was helpful and I hope you all go read Juliet Marillier and love her books because I love them so much and I just want more people to read them. Uh, but thank you all for watching and until next time, bye!